Good afternoon. Hello. <laughs> Introduce yourself for us. Christopher Jacob Carazel. Have you ever gone by Christopher? Uh, no, never. Never. Chris? Uh, yes, in high school. Okay. Um, where do you work? I work for the railroad in Dallas. And when you say the rail, like, any particular flavor of railroad or? Yeah, uh, we, I work for a freight railroad, um, a short line in Dallas. I've been there 18 years, okay. uh, 17 and a half. Are you a little nervous? <laughs> I am a lot of nervous. It helps if you breathe. All right. You're not from Dallas, are you? Uh, no, ma'am. Where are you from? I grew up in El Paso. Were you born there? I was born there. And... Have two brothers. I, I do have two brothers. Where are they in pecking order? Um, I have two younger brothers. So you're the oldest? I am the oldest. What's the age difference? Uh, my middle brother, he's uh, two and a half years younger, and then my youngest brother is nine years younger than I am. What year did you graduate from high school? I graduated in 2000. And were you still in El Paso when you graduated? Uh, yes, ma'am. Where'd you go after you graduated from high school, Drake? Uh, about two weeks after high school, um, my uncle worked for a railroad in Dallas. Okay. And uh, I moved to Dallas uh, looking to get on the railroad and uh, got on about about two weeks later. Okay. Who's your, which uncle are you referring to? Uh, David Martinez. Do you ride with David Martinez? I, I did, yes. Does he have a road name? Uh, 3D. And how's he your uncle? He's my my mom's brother. Is your mom here? <laughs> she is. Okay. Little brother or big brother? Um, she's his little brother. Or he's her little brother. Gotcha. So you started working for the railroad? How old were you? I was 18. Are you still, where are you working now? I'm still working for the railroad. And what do you do for the railroad? I'm a locomotive engineer. What is that? I, I drive the train. Okay. Jake, how old were you when you, how old were you when you rode your first motorcycle? Um, I rode my dad's when I was about 15, 16. Yeah. Uh, sometimes he knew about it, sometimes he didn't. Was it a street bike or a dirt bike? It was, it was a Harley, a street bike. And then uh, I think when I was 18 or 19, I bought my first Harley. What kind? It was a uh, Electric Glide. What color? Black. So you are a member of the Banditos. Uh, yes, ma'am, I am. Mm -hmm. How long have you been a member of the Banditos, Jake? Um, I've been a member a little over five years. Tell us how you first came into contact with Banditos. Well, my uncle had met him. Uh, at the time, there was not a Dallas chapter. And uh, he had met them, I guess, about 2005. I'm going to stop you right there. How old a man are you today? I'm 35. All right. So almost 36. Almost 36. Yeah. When's your birthday? Monday. Happy birthday. Not yet. So you say about five years you've been involved with the Banditos? Um, a little over five years, I've been a full patch member. Were you in another club before you joined the Banditos? Uh, yes, ma'am. I started a support club in Dallas-Fort Worth. You started it? Well, a group of us started it. What was the name of that club? Uh, ROCA. R-O-C-A? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. And had there been any other chapters of ROCA, or was it a brand new thing? No, that was a, a brand, new, brand, new, brand new club at the time. And who'd you, who did who'd you start that club with? Uh, my middle brother, uh, Zach, and uh, just a group of guys that came from different clubs or uh, families of, family members of Banditos. Tell us what, what all it was involved in you starting that club. Well, that, that club, um, it was a first red and gold uh, support club in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
it was just a group of us that got together and uh, we started a club and everything in that club kind of represented something in our, or in the, associated with the banditos. There was, uh, you know, um, it was uh, kind of like a brother or sister club to the banditos and um, I'm going to stop you for just a second. So yes, did ma'am. you guys come up with the name yourselves? Yes, we did. How did you come up with that name? There was a bandito um, from the kind of the Austin area mm-hmm. um, named J.W. Rock. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was in high regards with the motorcycle community. And uh, he passed on, so we stand, and we started uh, Roca for Rock, you know, after J.W. Rock. Got you. What year would that have been? Um, 2005 or six, I can't remember. Did you guys design your own patch? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. How did that, what was the patch? Um, there was a sword and a sombrero mm-hmm. and a, and a skull on it. And, um, I think like a bandana. How did you, did you have to get approval as a new club? Uh, no, no, we went through, I don't even know if we went through uh, United Clubs or anything like that back then. It was, uh, we just came up with artwork, uh, passed it around the community to see if anyone had anything that resembled that patch and that design, and uh, we started up. Okay, when you say passed it around the community, who would be the community that you passed it around? Uh, all of the motorcycle clubs in uh, DFW area. When you said United Clubs, what is that? Uh, United Clubs, it's a, I guess it's a group of pretty much most uh, motorcycle clubs in North Texas are a part of it. And uh, it kind of helps with protocol and with uh, making sure there's no other clubs that have the same uh, design. And really, like, if you're having a party, that's where you uh, broadcast it on the United Clubs website, and that's where everyone kind of gets the information of where the events are going going on. Why join a club? Like, why, why not just ride your bike? Well, I did that for years before uh, joining the, or starting a club, and um, for a long time, friends kind of always had excuses not to get out and ride, and, and I was young, and uh, I loved riding more than anyone else I knew, other than my brother and my dad. So uh, we started that club, and we had like-minded individuals that wanted to ride as much as we did. So you said it was a red and gold support club. Yes, ma'am. What does that mean? Um, it has us similar colors, well, ex- same colors as Banditos. Our colors are reversed, mm-hmm. and uh, I think the the easiest way to ex- describe it is kind of like a there's a minor leagues in baseball and then the the big leagues you know that it's a there's different levels of commitment and dedication and that was where I where I started did you have a cookie on your vest uh yes ma'am did you start with a cookie on your vest uh yes ma'am okay how did that happen tell us how that you came to get that cookie on your chest uh the the Fort Worth chapter is a only chapter in North Texas that was, yeah, that was a bandito chapter was only chapter in North Texas, and they kind of guided us along the way, and uh, they're the ones that they gave it to us. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you. Say that piece again. You said the. Uh, at the time, there was only one chapter in North Texas of banditos, okay. uh, Fort Worth chapter, and uh, uh, yeah, they kind of guided us along and. What kind of guidance? uh, How to ride together, how to, you know, just, there's no really guidance. Well, there's no really definite guidance. It's just kind of, you know, here's how we are. Here's what we do. You know, this is, it's just basic, basic stuff like putting your brothers first, um, riding together, being your brother's keeper, just simple, what seems like simple stuff isn't really just simple it sounds simple yeah but when you have uh people that don't really 
know each other that well. It's my brothers in my club are like my brothers in real, real life. I would do anything for them. And, uh, I hear you say that, Jake, and I gotta tell you, it scares me. You say you'll do anything for them. I mean, you've been listening to this evidence, have you not? Yes, I have. All right. So when you say you're gonna do anything for your brothers, I mean, is there a limit somewhere? Well, that's a little exaggerated. Um, anything legally, anything to protect my brothers, yeah, I would, All right. definitely. So when the banditos were giving you guidance in the support club, were they teaching you how to be a criminal? <laughs> Absolutely not. What did you, what was your, I guess, understanding of who the banditos were, what their reputation was when you were forming Roca? Well, uh, before that, when I, when I first met them, um, I had the, I knew of the reputation everyone else knows that's on the outside looking in. And what is that? Well, that they're bad guys and they're criminals and they're people you don't want to mess with. That was what I saw and uh, or that's what I've heard about until I actually met them. So I'm going to hit pause right there because yes, the timeline is important for me. Okay. You said that, that was, that's what you heard. Um, you pulled back to what you'd seen. Right, right. So uh, this when was, was this? When was okay, this, this was um, early in the year 2005, I believe. Um, there was actually a COC meeting that was happening in Fort Worth okay. that uh, they invited my uncle to. And um, who's your uncle? Uh, Dave Martinez or 3D. And uh, they invited him out to that COC meeting. And uh, when you say they invited him, do you know who were you there when the invite was issued? No, no, I wasn't. Okay, but it was Banditos. Ba Banditos, yes. Right. And uh, so he invited my father and myself if we wanted to come out there with him. All right, let's stop you right there. Okay. Um, does, where, does, where was David living at this time? Uh, in Dallas. Okay, and what does David do for a living? He worked, well, at the time he worked for the railroad as well. All right. <laughs> Were you in Roca at this point? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. This was before Roca ever started. All right, so he invites you, Dave Martinez invites you to go to this thing with the banditos, the COC meeting, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. All right. And what's your thought? I was, uh, I was a little bit scared. I was nervous, uh, but honestly, I was kind of excited. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was, yeah. It was. It seemed like a very good, very cool opportunity. Seems a little scary to me. I mean, you talk about the reputation of the banditos, and now you're going to go and hang out with them. Yeah, it, it was at the time. It was. <laughs> It was a little scary. And then uh, when we got there, I was nervous as hell. And <laughs> where, was the, where was the meeting? Where was the COC meeting? It was at Billy Bob's in Fort Worth. Okay. What time it, was it? A, do you remember the time of day? It was at night? Was it daytime? Oh, it was, it was during the day. I don't, maybe midday. Okay. So Billy Bob's, was it just you, your dad, and your uncle? Uh, yes, ma'am, I believe so. All right. And you get there, and what happens? Well, we get there, and I was nervous to, to meet him. And, and uh, my uncle saw the bandito that, that he had met prior to that. Yeah. And uh, they invited us over. Uh, we introduced ourselves. They introduced ourselves. And then uh, we pretty much just hung out that day. And just to see, we thought we were going, and it was just going to be banditos. But when we got there, there's clubs from all over the area, different clubs, and it was something I'd never seen. It was, it was pretty awesome. How many people, how many different, how many people, like if you looked at the crowd, you guesstimated, how many folks do you think were there? Um, hundreds, yeah, easily. It, Billy Bob's was full. <laughs> so was that your first COC meeting? Uh, yes, ma'am. From then until today, how many COC meetings do you think you've been to? Oh, man, uh, 20, 30, tons. Okay. Yeah, quite a bit. So after your uh, after you spent the day, how long were you hanging out with these guys on that day? I think we hung out until that about eight or nine that evening. Okay. And as you're leaving, what's your impression about the banditos? Well, what's what's funny is uh, we were leaving. I just remember this, but we were leaving, and uh, it was it was a Sunday, 
and uh, my dad was saying, "Hey, well, we gotta we gotta go back to work, or we gotta work the next morning, so we gotta head on back to Dallas." And uh, and I said, "Well, shoot, I, I ain't gotta work. I'll stay and hang out." <laughs> That's how quickly I was comfortable around him. And, and uh, but then I ended up leaving back with my dad and my uncle. And so. That's 2005, I think you said? Yes, ma'am. Ish. Um, how soon after that did you join a club? Well, um, after that, you know, we wanted to be around them more and more. So we, anytime they were uh, getting together, we were always traveling to Fort Worth to hang out over there. Yeah. Um, and that, that went on uh, until I think about October or November in 2005, and then that's when uh, I started, or we started Roca, the support club. Now you have you have children, yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So how many kiddos do you have? I have two. And who are they? Uh, Dylan and Jackson. And how old is Dylan? Dylan is 11. All right. And how old is Jackson? Eight years old. So Dylan's 11, what's his birth year? Uh, 2006. Okay. And Jackson? Jackson is uh, 2000, oh, what are we, 2010? Okay. Yeah. And their mom is? Uh, her name? Yeah. Yeah, Lisa. Were you and Lisa married? Uh, not at the time. I think, let me see what we got. No, when I started Roca. Um, did you ever marry Lisa? I did. Okay. I did. When did you marry Lisa? In uh, 2006. Got you. Yeah. Um, did you have Dylan shortly after that? Actually, I married her in 2005. Okay. Uh, had Dylan in 2006. <clears throat> Are you and Lisa still married? Uh, no, we're not. Um, what's the custody situation between you and Lisa? Um, I think it's joint. Uh, I get them. When you get them? The court says every other weekend. I get them more than that, usually every weekend. Every chance I get, okay. for sure. So do you guys get along pretty well on that issue? Yeah, very very well. So I hear you talking about this bike and wanting to ride it all the time, and then I look at you know new babies coming in the picture. Did the, that bike ride interfere with those babies? It did, and that's why that step, going to support club, was it was only fitting. I, as much as I wanted to be a bandito at the time, it wasn't, I, I still needed to commit completely to being home all the time. For, well, for Dylan was, a, was a really the only one it affected at the time. Okay. And so how old approximately, well, what changed that made you want to go from being in a sport club to actually joining the banditos? Well, I had, uh, I had stepped away from the support club uh, because I, I did get way more involved than I needed to be, and by that I mean I was I always wanted to be everywhere. So I kind of pulled back, and then uh, had we had our second kid, Jackson, and um, and then you know once he started, I think he was out of diapers, and once I can break loose a little more, I wanted to get back into it. And uh, did you have a leadership role within Roper? Uh, well, I was a road captain, and then I was a vice president, and then a president for a while. Okay. Now, while you were in Roca, did you have to pay dues to the banditos? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. No. Did you pay dues to the COC? Um, we did. We did. What were those dues? Do you remember? I don't remember back then. Mm -hmm. Was I, it voluntary? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, at some point, you said that Jackson kind of, you could break loose a little more. I guess Jackson had gotten older. Yeah, he was potty trained, and I can break away for bike nights and, you know, riding on the weekends. So it kind of gave me a little more um, where I wasn't having to just be home every second. So, and it kind of gave, me? yeah, exactly. And, and it kind of gave me and my ex-wife some time to go ride, you know, once, once he was a little older. Okay. Now, did you call Lisa your old lady? <laughs> yes, I did. Was she all right and, with that? Well, she, because it's not old with a D, it's old with O-L, like 
like good old boys. Okay. Yeah, there's she a difference. Was she alright with that? Uh, yeah, she was. You have a fiance now, do you not? I do, I do. And what's her name? Uh, Valerie. Is she alright with being called an old lady? Uh, she wasn't at first until I explained the difference, and she's good with it now. Hmm. Yeah. But okay. she still calls me her old man. She with leaves a D on there. there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, did you have to prospect for the banditos? Uh, yes, ma'am. How did that How did that come about? Well, um, when I I'd gotten out of Roca, and uh, I took a couple of years off, and then when I was going to go back, I thought about going into Roca, and then I decided that I wanted to be a bandito, and that's what I wanted to do. So I went to the Dallas chapter. At, there's a Dallas chapter at the time, and told him I wanted to be a bandito and I hung around for a little bit and then I started prospecting. Okay now we've heard a good bit about a hang around. Yes um, ma'am. Is that what you mean when you say you hung around for a little bit? I was yes I was uh, a hang around for a little bit. What is that what is that what all does that entail? Well there was at the time there was uh, a, I guess a handful of banditos in the Dallas chapter that I knew very well but there's a couple that I didn't know real well. Uh, so in that period, uh, it was for me to get to know them, them to get to know me. So it's kind of a, you want to make sure that this is the commitment you want to make before you start prospecting. Okay. Now we've heard, you've heard the testimony. Um, did you get the impression they were vetting you to see if you were the kind of guy they could, you know, trust with their... I don't know, to protect their secrets. The Panditos, it is a kind of a secretive organization, but it's not secretive in a criminal way. It's secretive like this is our club, this is our culture. Um, if you don't know it, then you don't know it. But a secretive in that way, secretive in a criminal way, no. Did you have to do a background check? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, do you remember? I don't remember. No, I don't remember. Okay, but truthfully, if you had to, would you have? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That doesn't offend you? No, no. It doesn't raise any specters that this motorcycle club wants me to go through a background check? No, because uh, anyone in that club, even me coming off the, well, not necessarily off the street, but me coming new to this organization, uh, they would have all given me any information they on themselves as well as me giving them my information So it wasn't like uh, Tell us who you are and you know, we ain't gonna tell you who we are It was it was kind of open both ways. Okay. So it didn't bother me and I had nothing to hide So how long were you a hangaround for this Dallas chapter? Uh, two or three months did you know, was your was either your uncle or your dad involved with that chapter at that time? My uncle was a president, yeah. All right. And so after you're a hangaround, is that when you start your prospecting? Um, after that, yes, ma'am. All right. Who prospected with you? Uh, my father did. My dad did. <laughs> Does he have a road name? Uh, yes. They what call is his road name? Uh, Shovel. How do you get a road name like Shovel? Well, he used to ride a, a Harley back in the 80s and it had a shovel head motor. And uh, he rode it for years and I guess that's where he got his name, Shovel. Do you call him Dad? I, I call him Dad, yeah. Okay. You don't call him Shovel? <laughs> no. Maybe when I'm messing with him, but yeah, not usually. Had your dad been in the Banditos uh, prior to him prospecting with you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know when he had joined? 2005, I believe. 2005, 2000. When when I went into Roca, he was uh, a bandito at the time in the Fort Worth, Dallas chapter. Um, did you know if he quit? Uh, yeah, there was some. The president at the time, prior to my uncle being president, he was. He did a lot of lying, and uh, obviously he's not in the club anymore. But my dad ended up quitting, walking away. Did they, uh, again, you've heard the testimony. How do you get out of the banditos? Well, he just got out. He didn't. Well, don't you get a, I mean, do you have to give 
your bike? Don't you pledge your bike five thousand dollars for your motorcycle? <laughs> no, ma'am. He he walked away with uh, with his motorcycle and dignity and walked tall. It was it's not what is being portrayed by far. If you don't want to be a bandito, don't be a bandito. So you didn't get beat up? No, ma'am. No. Jake, do you know people who have been beaten up in order to get out of the banditos? Uh, honestly, I don't know of any. Have you heard of any? Not any particular. You hear rumors of it, but no, I haven't heard any particular incident. So your dad got out of it? Yes, ma'am. What brought... How long was he out of it before he started prospecting with you? <clears throat> Uh, I think about three years, maybe, maybe longer. He was, a, yeah, about three, four years. Okay. What does your dad, or what did your dad do? Um, well, prior to Twin Peaks, he uh, he worked for the city there in uh, city of Garland. Doing what? Uh, he worked in the sanitation department. Doing what? Uh, he would go pick up the dumpsters and trash truck. How long did he do that? I think it was for nine, nine or ten years before Waco. He doesn't do that anymore? No, ma'am. Did he quit? No, ma'am. So how long do you guys prospect? Um, I prospected for uh, 202 days. What day did you get your patch? The 203rd day. And what date <laughs> was that? It was um, uh, March 3rd, 2012. I believe so. March 12th? Say it again. No, no, March 3rd, 2012. Why is that date significant to you? Seems like you remember it quicker than you remembered your kid's birthday, Jake. Are you really, well, it's because it was a pretty significant day for me. I, yeah, it was very important. Still is. Why is it so important? Why is that patch so important to you? It's, uh, it means a lot to me. It's something you, you go, you prospect and you, you work for. It's, it's not given to you. You earn it and you earn it. That individual earns it. My, uh, I prospected with my father, but he earned his and I earned mine. And uh, we worked hard uh, to earn it. And so that day was important to me. My kids were there. My wife at the time was there. My family was there. Uh, I teared up when they gave me that fat Mexican. So yeah, it was important to me. But I do know my kid's birthday too. Um, well, I, I believe that's the way they voted on for him to come back in. So mm -hmm. that's what was decided, and he did it. So for five years, you've been a member of full patch member of the Banditos. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and as a full patch member of the Banditos, were you just a? Did you start off with an officer position? Uh, no, ma'am. I started as a member. Okay. And what does it mean to be a member of the Banditos? How often do you have? What do you have to do? What are your obligations? Um, we have one national run a year. Um, funerals you're uh, expected to make it to. Uh, be a man, like my brother said. That's the best definition to be a bandito. Be true, be honest. Well, Jake, I'm not a man, and so I'm going to need you to flush that out just a little bit for me. When you say be a man... Um... Uh, it means... Be a man of your word. If you say you're going to do something, you say you're going to be there for a brother, your word is all we have. And uh, uh, you can be rich, you can be poor. And if you're a bandito, you're a bandito. And we take honor in that. So be a man. Do you have weekly meetings? Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Did you call them church? We call, yeah, church, card game. Card game? Yeah, card game. What do you do at those meetings? <laughs> uh, usually hang out, have a couple beers if you drink beer, um, get together, you know, love, love on your brothers, have a good time. What kind of club business gets discussed there? 
Um, you talk about runs coming up. You talk about parties. You know, in the not just in the bandito community, but in the motorcycle community, there's events going on all weekends, every weekend, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the week. So there's events all the time, and you know, the community loves us. We love them. So we are kind of everywhere. So we do talk about the events coming up. Um, do you pay dues still? Uh, yes, ma'am. Where are those dues? How much are your dues? Uh, well, I haven't been paying since I'm on trial, so it's kind of they've given me some leeway because this has been expensive. So um, from what I understand, it's a hundred dollars right now. Okay. Do you understand that that's the same courtesy that's been afforded to all the banditos that were charged in Twin Peaks? I don't know for sure, but I, I imagine so. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long were you just a regular member of the banditos before you became an officer? Uh, I think like six, seven months, and then I became the secretary treasurer. What's the secretary treasurer? What did you do as the secretary treasurer? You're, um, you're in charge of the whatever treasury treasury you had in your chapter, mm -hmm. which ours we <laughs> we were broke chapter always, but um, you're in charge of that. You're in charge of uh, putting out information to um, the members in the chapter. You're in charge of, or I kind of took it upon myself to uh, kind of put out the events and where we're going when we're leaving. I would, you know, that's How what. How would you do that? Uh, through text, usually. Okay. So, whenever you collect your dues as a bandito, where does that money go? Um, pre Twin Peaks, I understand. Pre it's changed, Pre Twin Peaks, uh, we would send it to to. Uh, the national treasury. Okay. Did you keep any of it for the local chapter? Uh, yes, ma'am. At prior to Twin Peaks, I think we um, our dues were like sixty dollars, and we'd send twenty five to nationals to help with the parties and stuff like that. And then we kept the remainder in house to help if a brother needs a tire or um, to pay for fuels on fuel on the run, hotels, stuff like that. Tell tell, tell me what a run is. Um, it's when we hop on our bikes and travel across the country to hang out with our brothers for a weekend. And what kind of expense is that besides gas? Like hotels, food. We were a chapter that liked to eat, so food was a big one. Um, fuel, hotels, that's pretty much it. Now, you've heard the testimony about the chase car? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When you go on a run, do you typically have a car follow you? Uh, yeah, yeah, most of the time. Why? Um, usually it's a, we have a truck or a, a vehicle pulling a trailer. Um, and so if one of us breaks down, we can, we have a, we're not just stranded. Any other reason? Um, a lot of times we throw our, our bags in there, our clothes, you know, keep them dry. So if it's raining, you know, keep our, our gear dry. Do you bring, uh, our old ladies welcome on those runs? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Longest distance you've ever driven within the state of Texas to go to a COC meeting? Um, I've been to a COC meeting in El Paso, so it's that's about from Dallas, 665 miles. What was so significant about that meeting that you drove 600 miles to get to it? Um, actually, it was I was in El Paso, and uh, there was one that weekend, so I made sure to. But you didn't go, go there it. specifically for the COC meeting? No, ma'am. Okay. I've gone to Houston, San Antonio, um, Tyler. Those I think in the Abilene. Region, though. Why would you go there? We attended them pretty much anywhere uh, they had them. We like to travel. We like to ride our bikes. And what's pretty awesome about the COC meetings is uh, wherever you go, there's clubs, all different kinds of clubs that come together for those meetings, and it's always a good time. Okay. Had you ever been to Twin Peaks or Waco? Or had you ever been to the Twin Peaks in Waco prior to May 17th? Uh, no, ma'am. Had you been to, as a bandito, had you been to Waco to either hang out or go to a bike night or anything like that? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Anywhere around here to go to a bike night? 
uh, around the Waco area? Yeah, and again, I'm not a Texan, so be no, specific. no, not really. Well, you say not really. Well, I've been to, I think, bike nights in Austin. I've never been to a bike night or really much of anything in Waco. I think I went to, a, well, actually, I did go to a COC meeting in Colleen years years ago. Okay, where is that in relation to Waco? I think it's south, uh, south. Yes, you may. Thank you. How'd you get promoted to president? In the support club or in, as a bandito? As a bandito. Um, I was a vice president uh, at the time of uh, Twin Peaks. And, uh, then let me back up. How did okay. you go from secretary to vice president? Um, I, while I was a secretary treasurer, we had a brother that was our vice president. And um, he, uh, he passed away uh, because of cancer. And uh, my president left that, that position vacant for, for a long while. And uh, after a certain amount of time, then uh, he made me the vice president. How did your responsibility or obligations change? Actually, the vice president was the best position I ever had. You kind of you were you had the respect of the members as a vice president but you really didn't have a whole lot of responsibility just it was a good position so just a little bit more prestige i guess and a little less work <laughs> yes ma'am okay. the the secretary treasurer is probably the toughest uh position to have now i'm sorry your honor may i I think I'd seen him around uh, when I was in a support club years ago, but I never had any interaction with him. Uh, that was probably um, 2006. Okay. Had you heard about him before you'd seen him? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, did, did you ever see him at a COC meeting? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. No, ma did you know why? No, I, I actually I didn't know why. Did you know anybody that was a member of the Cossacks? Um, well, when, when? Well, help me. When okay. You, have you ever known anyone who's a member of the Cossacks? I've known uh, guys that were Cossacks, but not, I have never known them as them being Cossacks. Okay, so former members. I yes, ma'am. Yeah. Got you. What about any of the Bogatiers? No, I've never, I, I've never heard of them or seen them before Twin Peaks. What about the scimitars? Uh, same with them. I had never seen them or heard them. Okay. Heard of them. How did you find out? I'm going to take you. Let's see. Come on. May, excuse me, March of 27, 2015. You saw some photographs of Rolando Campos. Yes, ma'am. Do you know? Did you know Rolando Campos in March of 2015? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How'd you know him? Um, he was a bandito at the time, and I was a bandito, and I knew him uh, from going to runs or parties. I, you know, I'd seen him before. Do you guys text message? I mean, did you talk on the phone? Uh, maybe a, f a few texts. You know, uh, most of the interaction was. Hey brother, how you doing? You know, or uh, just checking up on each other uh, prior to Twin Peaks. Where was his chapter? Do you know? Um, San Antonio. I'm not sure which chapter, but San Antonio area. So, I want to talk to you just a little bit about the chapters, the different chapters of Banditos. Are all of the chapters in Texas? Do you all have the same bylaws? If you know, 
Uh, yes, ma'am. Our club has one set of bylaws. And when you say our club, you mean the Banditos Motorcycle Club? The Banditos Motorcycle Club, yes. Okay. Are the chapters, to your knowledge, um, are they run the same way? Uh, no, no, they're not. What's the difference, if there is one? Um, we have one set of bylaws, and you follow those bylaws. Uh, different chapters run differently. They run different uh, depending on how the president runs his chapters. Some travel more than others. Some, yeah, it's all chapters are different. How did he run the chapter you were in? He ran the chapter. Um, we we try to be everywhere we could. Um, he was big on uh, doing the right thing, being smart. Uh, he was he was an awesome president. He uh, always looked out for what's best for for our chapter. He. Like always what? put his brothers first. Like, what's best for your chapter? I don't understand that. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, you hear people talk about the uh, banditos doing dumb stuff, and that was a big thing that we never did. Uh, he never tolerated anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to stop you right there. When you say banditos, banditos doing dumb stuff. Yeah. You, what do you mean? Um... You know, you hear about people uh, getting drunk, fights. Uh, Crimes. Yeah. Drugs. Yeah, and nothing. Assault. Bad stuff. Yeah, dumb shit. Excuse me. Is that me, what you call it? That, that's what I call it. And that was never tolerated. It wasn't. You, uh, and with our chapter, uh, everyone was, he made sure we were professional. Uh, everyone in our chapter was uh, had a job, had a good job. Um, you, if you said you were going to do something, you did it. What um, about appearances? Were there any appearances? What's What's funny is a lot of people look at bikers and you think they're dirty and uh, you know. I think what was the word that was put? Uh, you look at them and they look like bikers. You would think of from the 70s and 80s and and in Dallas we took pride in looking professional uh, most of us always wore a button up collared shirt and we wanted yeah we want we're a bandito but we're not a criminal we want to look professional and that was one thing that I always admired about the way uh, my uncle ran the chapter you you know you we're professional there's a reason we are the best and you believe that, that y'all are the best? Without a doubt, yes, ma'am. What makes a motorcycle club the best, Jake? Um, we are professional. We, we put our brothers before ourselves a lot of times. And uh, there's no room to be um, knuckleheads. We've been a club for this long because we are smart. And maybe... <laughs> Not all of us make the best decision all the time, but our club does, and knuckleheads get weeded out. Are there any other, aside from appearances, are there any other differences that you saw um, from your chapter compared to other chapters? Um, <laughs> Dallas, we always, I always thought we had the best prettiest bikes and the we kept them clean we took pride in our vest we kept it from you know we wouldn't go wash our vest but we liked it to look good were there any particular rules about how your patches get put on your vest uh stitched on do you have to stitch it on um when when you patch out we it's i don't think there's any rule towards it but we hand sew them you earned it 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 your fingers bleed by the time you're done sewing it on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. You got a new patch after Queen Peaks, didn't you? Uh, I've gotten a few, yes, ma'am. Expect no mercy. Yes, ma'am. Who gave you that patch? Um, a brother named Johnny from uh, Houston area. What's that patch mean to you, Jake? That patch. People outside our organization look at it one way. 
Um, I'm sitting up here and I'm being judged by everyone here, everyone on that camera. And I'm in this position and I, I can expect no mercy from, from society. I'm a bandito and I'm look at, looked at like a criminal. So I, I expect no mercy from anyone else. No, I'm not. Are you ashamed of the fact that you're a bandito? No, ma'am. I've never been in any trouble prior to this. Never arrested? And never arrested, no. So are you suggesting, Jake, that it's possible to be a bandito and not be a gang member? I wouldn't be a bandito if, I would, if this was a gang. When you joined, um, at some point, at some point in the back of your brain, were you expecting these guys to ask you to do something that you knew was going to be a crime? Before I met them, or? Yeah. My, my thoughts when I, before I met any bandito, yeah, I expected there to be some kind of uh, criminal activity behind the scenes. And, and when I met banditos in when I actually met him, I saw how that was a bad reputation. That was a bad reputation. There's, yeah, so I've never been asked to do anything criminal for this club or while in this club. Did you join the club with the specific intent or with any intent? The expectation that you were going to have to commit just a little bit of crime, just no. a little bit of crime, with just a couple of them. No, ma'am. And especially in our chapter, I can't speak for anyone else, any other chapter, but in our chapter, like I said earlier, we were all professionals. We had, we all have careers um, that most of us have been at for years. And uh, so that stuff isn't tolerated. It never has. And it, as long as I'm a bandito in any chapter, that, that won't happen. When you got arrested for this, for Twin Peaks, you've seen the same video I did. Yes, ma'am. There's a guy in a helmet right in the dead center of that video, Jake. Is that you? Yes, ma'am, it is. Why are you still wearing your helmet? <laughs> I didn't have a chance to take it off. I didn't have a chance to take it off. How long were you in custody? Uh, 27 days, I believe. 26 days. When you got out of custody that first go round, Jake, you had some rules on you, didn't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Tell us what those rules were. Um, I had an ankle monitor. Um, I was, I think it said I couldn't drink, I couldn't do any kind of narcotics. Well, do you do, I mean... <laughs> no, I, I take drug tests. I have a drug test at work, so that wasn't an issue. I had a, an ankle monitor. I was, I had a, I think a 10 p.m. curfew. Um, I was not to associate with banditos. Was it banditos or was it motorcycle clubs? I, I don't remember. I think it was banditos. Okay. Any other, any other rules? Um, I believe that's it, curfew. Um, I couldn't leave the state of Texas, I think. Could you come to my Well, house? actually, when it first, when I first got it, I was only allowed to go to a couple different counties right around Dallas. Were and, you allowed to come to McLennan County? Uh, no, ma'am, unless it was for a court date. How long did you keep that ankle monitor on? I can't remember. I think it was about six months. It Is that seemed, expensive? Uh, yes, ma'am. I believe it was about $300 a month. And I guess... I is it just a private company that sort of pings you and can tell where you're at? Is that how that works? Do you even know? Um, I believe that's the way it is. 
Um, I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'd asked you if you'd known R.O. How did you find out that he had gotten assaulted? Um, we had gone to a, I think it was a turkey day run or a birthday run um, in Longview that weekend. And, uh, so March of 2015? Uh, yes, ma'am. When, when is the Bandito's birthday? Okay, yeah, then it was our birthday run. When is the Bandito birthday? Uh, March. Okay. Did you see R.O. at that birthday run? Uh, yes, ma'am, I believe so. It's okay if you don't remember. I'm just asking. I'm, well, I don't remember, but I'm sure I did. I try and get it all around the campground. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 68. From Todd. Who's Todd? Uh, he was a bandito in another chapter in North Texas. Do you remember getting this message? I, I don't remember it, but it's there, it's there. Cossacks are out and been seen on I-20 heading towards Langhorn, Harley. Spread the word to all. This was around 9 p.m. Did you spread the word? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Why if, did you do that? Well, it's a heads up to the brothers and support clubs in our area. This is in February of 2015. Can you agree with me that that's before RO got assaulted? Uh, yes, ma'am. Why are you spreading the word about the Cossacks a month before that? Well, we've we've heard of them doing uh, dumb shit for a long, you know, for a while. So I wanted to put the word out to have all, all of our members and support club in our area. So when you send out a message like that, Jake, to whom do you send it? To who are you sending it? If uh, you remember, just as a general practice, just as well, a general practice, you get a message like this from somebody like Todd, where do you send it? I usually would send it to uh, the presidents of all the support clubs okay. and to all the members in the Dallas chapter. Did you do that as a vice president? Yes, ma'am. Did you do that as? Actually, I did that even as a, well, I don't think we ever had any text like that as a secretary treasurer, but yeah, no matter what position it was, I f passed on the information. Exhibit number 72. Now this was a conversation with the brother Jack. You guys have a club, the Devil's Disciple, Disciples in DFW. No, from Zach, that's an HA support, huh? To Zach, I think it's a 1% club. Where do you hear about that? Why is, why is your brother asking you about this? Um, I, I think he's asking, uh, I imagine someone told him that there was some de devil's disciples in uh, DFW. Why do you care whether or not they're devil's disciples in DFW? Well, it was, at the time, I thought it was a Hell's Angel support club, which it's not. Why do you care if there's a Hell's Angel support club in DFW? Uh, if we go to an area where there are no banditos. We give them a heads up. Uh, you know, it's just to know what's going on in our area. So you, like, are you running a hospitality suite? <laughs> no, but we don't want to get caught off guard if we see a club that we haven't seen before. How do you get caught off guard? Uh, by, I don't know, them showing up to... Uh, somewhere we're at or I don't know we just like to know who's in our area you you've been in this courtroom this entire time you understand you're accused of getting to some territory dispute with these other clubs yes ma'am and when I say our area I don't mean like this is our territory I mean you know where we live there's you know we like to know who's around so who are the devil's disciples um, it's a one percenter club. I think they're out of Arizona or something. I've seen them around. I, I don't know them though. A one percenter club. You got a one percenter diamond on your cuff? Yes, ma'am. Do you get that when you become a full patch member of the Banditos? Uh, yes, ma'am. What's that mean to you? Out of all the motorcycle community, we're the one percent that has a heart and dedication and commitment to be a Bandito. Um, we're, it means our club, our family, our club is our family. It doesn't mean we're a bad element.
States Exhibit Number 74. They were told they couldn't fly here, and this is 2-10-2015. Uh, Do you remember getting that message? That was to Zach or, or to me? It says to Zach Carazal. And I'll back up to States 73. Okay. Can you see the time stamp down here? 12, 47, 24 p.m.? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And this is 12, 47, 37 p.m. Does that appear to follow it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. They were told they couldn't fly here. What does that mean? Well, I don't know if it came from their club. Um, if there's a... If we go to California or to other areas where other one percenters are, we give them a heads up. Uh, either we call our nationals call them or they call us and uh, it's just protocol and I honestly don't remember if uh, that was a case I I really don't but are you expected to go and, and, and I guess run off these other motorcycle clubs that come into your that come to Dallas without permission no ma'am that's not the case then what are you supposed to do with that information what if, so what if you didn't have permission to fly here What's your job as a bandito to do about that? Well, it's not my job as a bandito, but if I uh, ran into them uh, at a bar or at an event or something, I'd go talk to them, ask them, uh, you know, kind of greet them, see what's going on or ask what they're them doing. why they're in Texas. Ask them, well, not necessarily Texas, but I'll ask them what they're doing around here. And uh, Do you think that's your business to know? No, it's not, but it's a courteous thing to to do and uh actually i believe they're still in north texas and they're friendly with uh banditos and other clubs in in north texas so and state exhibit number 82 the blue knights have you heard of them uh yes ma'am have you heard of them um i've seen them around States exhibit number 83. Even the bitches have a three piece. What's your response? Um, at, <laughs> at least they have enough sense to put Ali on there. Faggots. <laughs> do you not have a high opinion of law enforcement, Jake? No, I do. Um, and what I meant by that is there's. Uh, motorcycle clubs out there that they try and be they try and play both sides of the fence iron order they want to be well they're wannabes and they want to be uh, they want to have that outlaw or that yeah that outlaw image but in reality they're uh, they're cops and um, Can you be both I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Does outlaw to you, does that mean you lawbreaker? No, ma'am. Then what does it mean? It means we're, uh, we're looked at like we're, um, you know, like a, not a lawbreaker, but we are looked at like we're uh, some tough dudes. You look like a tough dude. Can you raise your right <laughs> hand for me, please? No, back side of it. They got a tattoo on it? Yes, ma'am. You can put it down. How long do you have a tattoo on the back of your hand? Uh, that one? Yeah, no, the one on the, the big one. Oh, that, that one. That everyone sees, yes. Um, I've had it for, I don't know, six months now. How long have you had your beard like that? A few years, yeah. You don't look mainstream to most folks, Jake. You know that. I, I get that. I understand that. And uh, just because I'm, I don't look mainstream doesn't mean I'm a criminal. <laughs> I understand. I understand. How long have you had that tattoo in your hand? The fight the good fight? No, the other one. This one? I think six months. Uh, I don't know. 
Well, maybe it's been about a year, Matt. Maybe, maybe a year and a half. I'm guessing your boss doesn't give you any flack about having a tattoo, a visible tattoo on your hand. Uh, no, ma'am. State's exhibit number 84. A group of 60 plus Cossacks have been heading south on 35, most likely going to a green and white event today. Please give a heads up to the red and gold in your areas. Who's Barry? Uh, he's a brother from North Texas. He wasn't in our chapter. Okay. Why is he sending you this message? I don't know if he put it out to a group of us or if he sent it directly to me. I, I can't remember, but uh, when I got it, I forwarded it on to the brothers in my chapter and to our support clubs. Who are your support clubs? Can you look at these messages right here and tell us just by the names? What club they're in? Yeah, the support clubs. Uh, Vaqueros, um, Camaradas, Descrociados. State's Exhibit 85. You see that? Just a heads up. We received a message that a rival club may disrupt the COC today. Could be a rumor. Supposedly an email was sent to the police and they passed it on to another club. Just received this info a few minutes ago. No time to confirm. Please let our support know if you're going to COC today. Yes, ma'am. Did you pass that on? Uh, I believe so. State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. So what do you do? I mean, if you get information that a rival club is going to disrupt the COC meeting, what do you do with that? You're supposed to, I mean, are you going to go there and beat them up? Are you going to stay home? Like, what are you supposed to do with that information as a member of the Banditos? Well, we're not going to change our, our, uh, our plans. We're going to go, but it's good to pass that on uh, as a heads up. What's the date on that message? Uh, March 15, 2015. States Exhibit 89. Who's BRO? Um, my brother, RO, Ro. And the fellow down there in the bottom of that picture? That's my brother, Ro. Is that after he was beat up on the side of the road in Lorena? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 90. Are you the one that sent that picture to Barry? Uh, yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 91. Having a guard card game tonight if you don't have much going on, brother. Um... You sent that to Barry, yeah? Uh, yes, ma'am. And you've told us that a card game is one of your meetings. Yes, ma'am. Why Why were you inviting Barry to your meeting? It was out of, I think, the first, the prior two text messages. And uh, we had a card game that night, so I was passing on the invitation. You know, I see this picture, Jake, and it, I mean, are you, looks like retaliation. Are you meeting with Barry to sit down and have a conversation about how to get back and whoever it was beat R.O. up? Absolutely not. No. States Exhibit 100. Who's Chad Andes? Do you know? Uh, he's a he's a brother in well he's in a support club in Dallas, a vaquero. Keep your women from posting what's going on on Facebook no posting about bike night or where we will be going why are you sending that message well we were going to we we're going to continue to be a motorcycle club and to get out and uh go to bike nights and stuff but we wanted a we don't want it broadcasted for people that are targeting us to make it so easy for them to find us so it was precautionary
Science Exhibit 101. This is the life we live. We will prevail. What do you mean by that? Well, the first part, be smart, be vigilant, uh, be on your toes. But yes, we are a motorcycle club, and, and don't be afraid to, to stick by your brothers. And over time, these, these problems will subside, and we will prevail. Who is B. Gator? Uh, he was a bandito in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Is he not anymore? Uh, no, ma'am. Hey, brothers, if we get together and we're not going to make it, let's reach out to a brother and let them know, especially right now, so we're not wondering if we're on the road and what's going on. Yes, ma'am. Why are you sending that message out? Because if we have brothers on the road, we want to know that they made it home safely or wherever they're getting to. We we do care about our brothers let's talk about that green and white weather advisory can you please explain to us what this is supposed to mean Jake <laughs> um, it was a message that was sent to me and I forwarded on um, there's a green and white club the winos um, they were uh, them and the Cossacks were kind of running together and they were targeting uh, banditos so if we saw them moving or someone seen them, we gave our brothers a heads up to kind of stay away from that area. So it's forming over the stockyards? Where are the stockyards? In Fort Worth. I don't know what the stockyards are. It's uh, old stockyards where it's a tourist part of Fort Worth. Okay. Bars, restaurants, shopping. Okay. With the potential of hunting hail, what does that mean? Honestly, I don't know. Who is Stash? He was a bandito in Fort Worth. Not anymore? No, ma'am. Well, where did he go? Where did Stash? Why is he not a bandito anymore? Do you know? I think he quit, but I'm not, I'm not for sure. You ever seen that sticker before? I have. Where? Um, in that text. Any other place? I think uh, there was one on it on a bike that was pulled off a bike at Twin Peaks. States 106, talk shit, get hit. You remember sending that out to your dad and to Chuck? Yes, ma'am. Are those your boots in the bottom of that picture? Yes, ma'am. Is that blood on the driveway or on the concrete? It is blood. Whose blood is that? At the house I was living at um, with my fiance. Um, we had Chuck got... is not responsible. I'm trying to Hang answer. On. Wait. Oh, go ahead and rephrase your question. Thank you. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, ma'am. How do you recognize it? It was a picture I sent to my dad and my brother. Okay, what is it a picture of? Of my boots and blood. Okay, was that your driveway? Yes, ma'am. I look at that message. Did you hit somebody? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, who did you hit? I hit, um, there's a neighbor that lived down the street from that house. Okay. Uh, Remember his name? Yes, ma'am. What's his name? His name's Alex, I believe. Alex. Alex. Why did you hit him? He had came over to my house, and I had got back from a wedding with my fiance, and uh, uh, when I got to the house, uh, I saw him and his brother were at their house drinking and hanging out, so I invited them over. What time of night was this, or day was this? It was, it was probably about 2, 3 in the morning. It was late. Okay. Um, when I invited him over, we were in the kitchen. My fiance went to go to sleep, so she went in the bedroom, shut the door. and. Uh, Where were you when she did that? In the kitchen. Okay. And uh, that guy, Alex, went to go use the restroom, and when he was going to the restroom, he went into my bedroom and uh, put his hand on uh, my fiance and what is your fiance's name Valerie okay. and and then um, when he came back out she told me what happened and and I hit him I well I asked him if he did that what and he said yes so I hit him why'd you hit him 
Because I think that's been asked and answered. Stunning. Would you do it again? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever come back to your house? Uh, he did to apologize. Do you still live in that house? No, ma'am. States Exhibit 107. Who are the junkyard dogs with? Uh, they're a motorcycle club in Terrell. Weren't they a support club at one point? Uh, they were. Why'd you take their heart patch? Well, they're a support club, but um, as a support club, you travel with us, you you know, go to our events, and they pretty much just stay at their clubhouse, and they're more of a drinking club than a motorcycle club, so they weren't... Uh, it was a mutual decision between them and us. They were no longer support club. Now, when you say you took their heart patch, I, have, I mean, do you just walk into the club and rip it off their vest? Like, how did that work? No, ma'am. We went to their clubhouse, uh, told them they weren't uh, living up to the expectations of this other support clubs, and they agreed. They handed us a bag with their um, support patch. And is that the cookie that we've heard about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you still friends with any of those guys? Yeah, actually we are. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Who gave the Dirty Bastards Collin County, States Exhibit 108? When you say we did, what do you mean by that? I mean, well, you don't have the power to give a county to somebody. No, ma'am. What uh, they used to wear, I think McKinney is what they wore as a bottom rocker. Mm -hmm. And uh, a group of them uh, left to start a support club. And they were wearing a city rocker. And uh, when a group of them left to start a support club, uh, some of the guys that, that stayed behind were kind of mm -hmm. uh, bummed out that they, uh, you know, that half their club left. So we told them, why don't you put on a Collin County as a bottom as a bottom rocker and go from wearing a city to the county. And it was just a, we don't literally give them permission or anything like that. It was just a gesture to, you know, put it on. So when you say we did, were you an actual member of the Banditos when that happened? Yes, ma'am. Stacey's in at 110. Do you remember who David Golden is? <laughs> yes, ma'am. When you say H.A., are you referring to what? Hell's Angels. Okay. I don't believe Mr. Golden was receptive uh, to your message. Uh, no, ma'am, not at first. Okay. Do you have any friends who are members of the Hells Angels? Um, acquaintances, and not, I guess not real friends, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you States 111. Does that appear to be some more communication with Mr. Golden? Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, at some point during your communication with Mr. Golden, did you talk with somebody in Hells Angels? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, was it a text message? Was it a phone conversation? Do you even remember? It was, uh, I think it was a text, um, a Facebook message. All right. And why are you concerned about some other dude running around in Dallas with pretending to be a Hells Angel? Well, uh, you'd be surprised how many people pretend to be banditos or hell's angels or any other big club. You, you have people that pretend to be that. And, uh, I hear you, but the thing I'm struggling with is why is that any of your business? Well, um, we were hearing rumors that the Cossacks were uh, working with the hell's angels and we we're hearing all kinds of rumors. So if I see something, I'm gonna kind of check it out. Yeah. Did Definitely. that rumor turn out to be false? Yes, ma'am. 
and so did him pretending to be a hell's angel. That was fake. Did you threaten him? No, ma'am. States 112. Word is it will be storming today and tonight in Waco. This is on April the 16th. You sent this to Wrecker. Who is Wrecker? Actually, I think I sent it to that whole group, but it only showed Wrecker. All right. What do you mean by it's storming today and tonight in Waco? Honestly, I'm I'm not sure. I think, um, honestly, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it was storming or if I was giving a heads up. Um, that's not my wording, so I imagine I copied it, but it doesn't say who I copied it from. Do you know what it means? I don't think I have any numbers for down there. Um, maybe, maybe I did write it and didn't have a contact with anyone from this area. So is storming just a euphemism you, you use for, I mean, what is it? Well, the second message I've seen with that in. I, I know it sounds evasive, but I don't know if it was actually storming and we're, well, no, we weren't headed down there, but um, it sounds like there's probably Cossacks out looking for us. So I wanted to get a word out to the brothers that, that are around this area or support clubs. But yeah, honestly, I, I don't remember. States Exhibit 113. You know Bandito, Engine Jesse Deal 1-Percenter took Sonny Barger's patch. Who is Sonny Barger? Uh, he was like a founding member of the Hells Angels. Okay, and Engine Jesse Deal, who's that? He was a, a Bandito, a brother, years and years ago. Was that prior to you getting... Becoming a member of the Bandidos? Uh, yes, ma'am. And it was just put out, I think, like a piece of history, you know? Mm 